Coming up in DC News now at noon, changes coming to public safety in Virginia, what Governor Yunkin is promising after a spree of shootings in the past month. And later, inflation is on the men as the midterms are right around the corner. Why both parties think this will give them an edge. Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. We are keeping an eye out for First Breeze Watch. Meteorologist Scott Sumner is in for Damon Madsen. And first of all, Scott, happy Monday to you, my friend. How are things yeah. looking? Hey, Mark, did you get the heavy jacket and the scarf and the gloves ready? Not yet. I, Not I, yet? I, I have to go pick them up in Pennsylvania, but that's a whole other story we can talk <laughs> offline about. <laughs> well, certainly you're going to need that here over the next couple of evenings because it is going to be chilly. That's the main weather talk here in the weather center and around the town is the fact that really cold air is going to build in here for a short amount of time. Don't don't. Don't worry, it's not hanging on for a long period, but uh, we do have a full seven day forecast, which has an up and down fluctuation of temperatures. We'll show it to you in just a little bit. OK, Scott, thank you. And happening today, former D.C. Deputy Mayor Chris Geldart, Geldart is expected to appear before a judge. Court documents show that Geldart scheduled to be arraigned in Arlington General District Court around two o'clock this afternoon. Geldard faces assault and battery charges after getting into an altercation at a gym earlier this month. He resigned as D.C.'s deputy mayor of public safety last week. Well, just a day after the shooting in Harrisonburg, Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin says he's cracking down on crime in the Commonwealth. D.C. News Now's Lex Juarez has a look at what we can expect from his announcement today. Well, Governor Youngkin's going to be announcing a new public safety initiative, and it's going to be impacting the entire state. Taking a look at just Northern Virginia and the crime here, you can see by a quick look on our website, we've covered at least eight shootings in this area over the past month. Now, the announcement by Governor Youngkin is part of his violent crimes task force. He sent down leaders from more than a dozen areas of Virginia standing by him as he announces these new plans to bring down crime. Now, with multiple shootings, burglaries, and stabbings having been reported in this area of northern in northern Virginia in just the past few weeks. All eyes will be on the governor to see what he's going to do to make a change. Now that announcement will come today at two o'clock. It'll be an, happening in Norfolk, Virginia, and of course we'll have comprehensive coverage of it both here and online. In Northern Virginia, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. Thank you, Lex. Developing now, 13 people are displaced after a house fire this morning. Now, take a look at what happened at the Greenway neighborhood. D.C. Fire says the fire started on the top floor. Two adults, 11 children, were safely evacuated. No injuries were reported, and the cause of the fire remains under investigation. New today, police say one of the suspects responsible for the mass shooting in Harrisburg, Virginia, is now behind bars. Officers say they arrested 20-year-old Tyree Fleming yesterday afternoon. The shooting happened near the James Madison University campus, and police say that several rounds were fired into a crowd at an outdoor gathering. Eight people, all adults, were injured and are expected to be okay. Fleming is now being charged with attempted murder. Happening now, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan is speaking at Frostburg State University with Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Frostburg is one of the places that the governor is visiting throughout Western Maryland. Uh, governor Hogan is also hosting the annual Appalachian Regional Commission Conference at Rocky Gap Resort in Cumberland today. And he will make a major announcement regarding transportation at 2.30 in Grantsville. Well, Democratic candidate for governor, Wes Moore, will be in Hagerstown today. Moore will be visiting local businesses for a walking tour this afternoon, and he will also headline a fundraiser at the, th at the theater later tonight. Also happening today, former President Donald Trump is expected to help fundraise for Republican candidate Dan Cox. Tickets to the event are not cheap. It's going to run you more than $1,700 for the event's private cocktail reception. A photo with the former president and candidate Cox will cost $25,000. Well, an update to a story we brought you this morning. We are now learning that four people were killed when drones strapped with explosives struck the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. The mayor of Kyiv said that the capital's central district was also hit the worst, and this was the second of such drone attacks in the recent weeks. Ukrainian officials said that they shot down 13 drones in, Kyiv, in the Kyiv region. 
though five were still able to strike the city. Now is your local election headquarters, and in a few weeks, Maryland voters will place their ballots for a new governor, while other local races seem to be neck and neck. Now, since there are some differences across the region, let's take a look at what you need to know as a voter in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. Maryland's November 8th general election is weeks away. This general election, at least for Frederick County, is highly important because it's going to determine the direction of our county for, for the next four to eight years. A few of the bigger races in Frederick County is a battle for county executive between Republican candidate Michael Huff and Democratic candidate Jessica Fitzwater. The county council at large seat is one of the most competitive races in Frederick County, with Republicans Tony Shemleck, Phil Dacey, and Democrats Renee Knapp and Brad W. Young battling it out. Voters can vote in person or by mail. I personally like in person because I like the voting process. I like saying hi to the people that, that are working um, so diligently for us. I like seeing my ballot. Um, I like seeing my ballot being counted. But also, um, I've talked to a lot of people who are doing mail-in voting. One of them is Elizabeth Claygett, who says voting by mail is more convenient for her. I changed to a mail-in ballot when, during the pandemic, and I have not changed back. It's kind of convenient and fun. I'm a registered Democrat, but I don't always vote the, the ticket straight. Um, so I look at the people who are running and hope for the hope for the best. The last day to register to vote is October 18th and voters have until November 1st to request a mail-in ballot. But if you've already requested a mail-in ballot, the Maryland State Board of Elections says that those mail-in ballots are now being sent out. For now, reporting in Frederick, Maryland, I'm Michaela Newton for DC News Now. Well, high, in, high inflation remains a key concern for voters, and the final consumer report ahead of the midterm elections shows the prices rising more than expected. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor tells us how both parties are responding. They are furious with Biden and Pelosi's far-left socialist agenda. Republicans are hoping high prices translate into high voter turnout in their favor in next month's midterms. On Fox News Sunday, Louisiana Republican Congressman Steve Scalise blamed the Biden administration's war on U.S. energy as a main driver of inflation. He shut off American energy production. That's why it happened. But on ABC This Week, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg argued the administration is lowering prices for families. We have been doing the right thing for the American people with proposals that are uh, and achievements legislatively that are popular because they make sense. Congress recently passed a key administration priority, the Inflation Reduction Act. It doesn't provide immediate relief to consumers, but will eventually help them save money on things like energy and health care costs. Buttigieg said Democrats don't get proper credit. Having achieved so much legislatively makes it uh, hard to talk about it all at once because there are just so many accomplishments. The debate played out on CNN's State of the Union in Colorado's Senate race. Joe O'Day, the Republican hoping to unseat Democrat Michael Bennett, blamed the current state of the economy on previous COVID relief. This uh, inflation has been caused by the $1.9 trillion reckless spending bill that got put in place by Michael Bennett. But Senator Bennett said he doesn't regret supporting the funding. It cut childhood poverty in half last year because of a bill that I wrote. And that was D.C.'s Jesse Tenor reporting. Soaring rent and food costs drove the latest rise in the Consumer Price Index and reinforces the expectation that the Federal Reserve will deliver a fourth interest rate hike next month. President Joe Biden is calling the abandoned U.K. tax-cutting plan a mistake. British Prime Minister Liz Truss announced plans to cut taxes by 45 billion pounds in September, but did not detail how the country would pay for them. Trust has now canceled 20 billion pounds of those tax cuts, leaving the value of money plunging to a record low. I think that uh, the idea of cutting taxes on the super wealthy at a time when, anyway, I just didn't, I, I, I disagreed with the policy, but that's up to Great Britain to make that judgment, not me. Well, the president says he's worried that other nations' fiscal policies could hurt the U.S.